Here's how to defend at the highest level. My name's John, I'm gonna be your FIFA coach, guys. If you're brand new to this channel, uh, we do everything. So check out my daily content videos where I post every single day right at content drop for you, for you. But today we're gonna be breaking down the 41212 and then the also the 43. Anything that has either a four, four in central mids, this is the defense that you should be looking at. This is how to structure your defense. This is how to understand timing, when to pressure, when you throw in offside traps, all this good stuff coming in. So stick with us. Make sure you guys hit the like, subscribe, and then ding the bell. Oh, but I also, I forgot to tell you guys, if you want your own private coaching session and you need, you want help with six to eight hours of content, you guys can check me out on medify.gg and get, and, uh, get your own session with me. But let's get straight into it. And remember, everything is free, guys. This is all free right here. This is all free. So I hope you take a second and watch an ad to help our channel grow as a as a, as a brand new YouTuber. Okay, so coming in here, guys, I want you to look at the structure. The first thing we're looking for is structure, okay? There's a four-step process to my defense, okay? There's a four-step process. And one of those first steps is really the structure. You see how we have this is more of a 41212 right here. This is a 41212. You can see the structure here. Everything's set, right? And to be honest, uh, when I play, guys, the first 10 seconds on counter is a higher chance to score than any other moment in the game every single time you get the possession. But what I want you guys to see is the structure, okay? First off, structure. That's what we're looking for. Now, what we're looking for is really these holes, okay? So the idea is that we have gaps here, right? And so if we get holes here, players can make those through passes. And so my priority number one, priority number one is really this right here. This is number one, okay? This is priority number one. And the reason why, guys, the reason why is, of course, if we see somebody running this way, right now the L1, R1 uh, lob pass is absolutely impossible to stop. That is where we're trying to defend priority number one, okay? So priority number one, over the top passes, and these if a ball, ball gets right here in the through pass. The number one most dangerous position a player can be in is if there's nobody in the middle between the ball and the ball and this player, and they're making a direct run this way. If they're making a direct run that way, guys, you need to have the vision to see that. That is basic, but it's 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 principle, okay? Because when it comes down to this, guys, the higher you go up. The higher you go up in divisions, the higher you go up, nothing changes. The principle is all the same. Everything's basic. Everything is simple and basic, especially on defense. It's all structure. What changes is the timing, the tempo, and positioning that you're going to be able to put yourself in because the defender is now, instead of trying to get you into anticipate, they're trying to manipulate you into different positions, therefore opening up areas. That's the difference as you grow. As you grow. But... Priority number one is right here. We're guarding this angle right here, okay? That's the most, most, most prioritized area that we're trying to develop, okay? And the second area is actually this angle right between here. Now, in the fourth three, it's gonna be a little bit wider. So this uh, Viera may be up just a hair. So it's more of like this angle. And so this is where, depending on your skill level, if you're, a, I think, a lower level skill, I think uh, a four, uh, when it comes to defense, I think a 4 one, two, one two is a little bit better because this guy drops down a little bit and it's a little bit easier to uh, have him manually cover that angle, especially if you have a medium medium work rate player like a Vieira, this uh, baby Vieira. But if we have a defensive work rate player, uh, sometimes like uh, the four three two one then uh, he may actually drop down a little bit. So work rates make a huge difference in this. Work rates make a big difference here. Work rates make a big difference just in general on defense, okay? So just understand that all this stuff is interacting with the player's work rate and their defensive awareness at all times. When I break down my players, if you guys follow my daily content where we talk about daily investments and all the SBC stuff, all that good stuff, you guys can check it out. But basically, everything breaks down to work rate, positioning and your manual control on defense okay manual control and then i guess there's a little bit of uh animations because uh basically guys there's sometimes there's stuff parts where you can't control it okay you can't control it and animations are due to stats in-game stats body types uh they're built built engine stats okay all that stuff 
comes down very it's very critical okay very very critical type stuff okay work rate positioning stats and uh uh, I, I, I honestly I just I just forgot what I was about to say but basically what I'm trying to see show you guys is this angle right here is the most crucial and they always say this you guys I am not waffling I'm really actually getting you guys good content the fastest point from point A to point B is a straight line so as a defender what are we trying to do we are trying to force them in these directions okay we're trying to force them in these directions outward we're trying to force them out 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 and so if this is our let me change the let me change the color code on uh, on this we're gonna go red for defense okay we're gonna go red for our defense this is what we want to this is what we want to do for defense, okay so this is our defensive line right here okay and we are this is kind of our prioritized angle right here if you can you guys can see this this is kind of you know our line right here this is where the priority is, r lies because the idea is that we can technically track this guy back. We can technically track him back and then change the angle of, of all this. But right here, this is these are the angles that we're looking at defensively. And basically, the idea is that we're trying to slow down their time because the more time we have to react, the more the easier it is to defend. Like I said, the first 10 seconds on a counter is the highest chance of probability of success so if you can get them to 15 seconds 20 seconds of ball control where they just dribble and dribbling around uh, they're not gonna be able to penetrate you anywhere near as fast as they're gonna be able to get up the pitch through the narrow and the reason why i like to play the 41212 narrow on defense is because look at this all this is straight up the pitch so we can go tiki taka all the way through and try to get in as fast as possible so it's really hard for the defense to react that's why the 412 and two is very effective but okay Moving on here. This is priority number one, okay? Priority number two is right here inside this little box here, okay? Because the reason why I call this priority number two is because we basically need to uh, stop the ball from getting to this position. And this is where majority of players lack in defense is <laughs> they do a couple of things. Um, what some of the worst habits that players do make is when they player switch, they do this. They player switch and they step forward. They step forward and then they may come back, right? Now that 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 may seem very simple, but the, the problem is, let's say, let's say it's a really tight scenario. Sometimes these things are really quick, guys. They're half second situations. But if you player switch and you have a bad habit of stepping forward rather than stepping back, what happens? He goes forward here and then the ball goes in behind type of thing, right? Happens all the time. Happens to most players. That's about probably 75% of most mi uh, mistakes made in the game. It's just a simple step forward at some point, even at the elite level. What happens is they play the ball. He's up. He, everything's tracking back. Everything's tracking back. He's coming back. And then we get the ball R1X, R1X. We get the ball right here. And then we player switch. And we accidentally step this way instead of stepping this way to defend a run and force him to take time or then Vieira to come in from behind. That's generally the case of what's happening uh, with issues in the game. There, a lot of the time, guys, you have time to, to bring these guys back, and they're not going to be able to get in behind you. So, number one, one thing, uh, there's three things that I recommend uh, definitely practicing. Number one, when you player switch, when you player switch right here, right stick, we right stick, I want you to just... I want you to dart this way. Just start darting this way and back. Um, now, is that gonna be ideal in every scenario? No, but what I'm trying to teach you is how to break a bad habit. If you can break this bad habit, you will cons you will consistently have more time to react, one, but two, you'll have a better understanding of where you should be thinking about when you apply pressure. So it's basically, guys, some some people go in and out of form and you're like why am i so good at sometimes and why am i so bad at other times it's probably sometimes it's because you probably just are accidentally forcing play this way okay okay so enough waffling there <coughs> the next idea is um the next the next concept guys is really the center mids how do we want to defend in this now the idea is that we want at minimum one CDM in this location. Now, if we're playing like a 4-4-2, four, four, 
things change a little bit okay and so i'll be coming out with a video with the 442 it is a little bit different it's a little bit higher risk um but the thing about it is the the amount of the counter attack the speed the defense uh it, it makes it's a little bit more aggressive and so you do you do lack some space here which can be very hard to to stop um but <coughs> But basically, I'll show you guys how. Essentially, the rest of this clip is actually phenomenal defense, and you guys will see it here in a second. But basically, guys, you don't want you don't want this pass happening. You just basically do not want this pass to occur. You don't want this pass to occur. A lot of players allow this pass to occur, and then they try to track back on it. They try to track back on it, and that's you know that's you know what you would do ideally. But then what happens is lower level players will even step forward and try to step and step and step. And so if we make an actual step this way, what happens is all this comes down. This angle shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. And so basically the AI is actually referencing like this zone here. And so if you actually look when you and your width is basically set like this. So like this is how your width is set essentially. And so regardless of what you may think, this is basically how the game is uh, reacting to your player width, your depth, everything, all that stuff occurs. In FIFA 21, in FIFA 21, there's a mechanic that shows depth at, inside the box, like right here inside the box. Your defensive awareness is actually lower than outside the box, okay? So that's why I have a high depth. But what we're trying to do, guys, is constantly, if we apply pressure, if we apply pressure here, we want to drop him over, we want to drop him over, okay? And so then the, the ball goes this way, it's a constant dance, we're trying to do this. You see you see the dance we're trying to constantly draw up this dance but this is what's key guys this is what's key i want you to reference this if there's anything to take away from this session this uh, this video today is right here okay so right when we get to this point oh sorry our defender has this thing called a plane every single one of our players i consider a plane here okay every single one of these guys pretty much the whole back line there and him right here and then there's actually planes this way on the defense okay there's planes this way so there's multiple planes going on okay this is in a very high level idea this is what's happening with every single player okay they have a cross right in between okay now some of these don't matter as much and the ones that don't matter are like uh like Vinny, the the attackers right here um like basically anything above here is more of an aggressive stance anything back here is a passive so i just want you to be understanding that like when you play aggressive when you play passive so, like on the wings this is aggressive this is passive this is passive but this is also aggressive so like the further we come in the more space he has out wide the further we come we out the higher chance that he can come this way the further we go this way however there is a spectrum so this is a passive movement this way but the problem is if we go too far out then then that becomes aggressive okay so then then he's able to get inside so i want you to constantly be seeing your body positioning as a passive and aggressive movement and so when he when we make a tackle here and we pass his player and we come out here that means that now he has opening in space and so what a lot of players do is they don't necessarily are they don't really care about their how aggressive they're playing with these guys and i'm telling you that's most likely wrong when it comes to structure okay on defense, you have to be passive uh, to really to really be good good at this game. You have to be passive, and but then again, guys, I'm not here to set judgment uh, because everything depends on time. Right here, it's one one in the 30th minute. So what are we thinking? We're thinking passive. There's no need to be. If I'm down a goal, if if it's two one them and it's in the 60th minute. I should start considering being a little bit more aggressive, pulling these players up, pulling these players up, pulling these. But here's the thing, guys. Here's <coughs> here's what I like to say is ideal. One goes up, we all go up, okay? So if he goes up, I'm sending an offside trap with everything coming up, okay? If I apply pressure, it's all about timing, though. And so if he makes a pass backwards, this is where I start to apply pressure. I don't apply pressure when he's coming this way, okay? If his body positions this way, we, we let we set, okay? We set. If he if he makes a pass this way, within that amount of time, I'm clicking the offside trap, and you guys will see it, and we're applying pressure, okay? That's the idea. And the reason why we're setting an offside trap is basically to shrink this gap. We want this gap in priority number two. In priority number two, we want that gap to be shrunk. Very similar to how the trash compactor in episode four of Star Wars is 
when they drop in that outside of the uh if you guys are my nerd my nerd value and uh but basically we want to apply pressure from both sides here okay and what happens is attackers if they play this ball here and we don't have pressure coming from here they can pretty much create a one-on-one -on -one scenario here and uh basically try to 1v1 us rather than a than i say 6v2 so one two three four five six seven v four whatever it is so do we have an advantage if we can't control this player don't have enough time or do are we at a disadvantage if if uh <laughs> we are able to control this player and come back we're at a higher advantage coming in here because what happens is they your ai will just stand flat unless you use that r1 mechanic and generally they just run directly at and so they're able to turn away pretty easy and so it's a lot easier to def it's a lot easier attack if basically if if you get us one-on-one -on -one here and we're, we're defending a center back so that's the idea there and guys i'm now i'm going to show you some more some fluidity there's a lot more to this i don't have i don't have time to cover everything and remember this is all just coming straight from my knowledge come straight from my my mentality here so this is there's there's several step more steps to this but basically let's check this out all we're trying to see is structure you see how structure we are structure 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 the second he goes back that's where we go up and so then boom look at this there we go offside trap you can't see you can't see i put the offside trap here but we just push an offside trap okay offside trap when the ball goes back up okay i just want to re-watch this here let's watch this again think of the timing here step 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 see how we're still structured we're guarding the ball we're guarding the pass once he goes up we both go up here we are now there's time there's time here you see the distance here between the gap when i say we one goes up we all go up he's not going to be able to make this pass here through so guess what i have a safe place to send that offside trap and boom that's what we do now he makes that pass back one goes up we all go up guard the passing angle passing angle then guess what happens he breaks that plane he goes down we try to go back and then i'm trying to switch the viera here we get switched we get switched off that those things will occur he has a good chance of getting this play but what do we do we guard that run instead we force a simple simple easy play and then right away guys simple counter attack right on right on cue let the overlapping run simple over the top get a little look in the messy and that's how you finish around but guys let's watch this again let's watch this one more time let's watch actually i'm gonna draw this back just a hair so you guys can see a little free-flowing defense here free-flowing defense here Okay, so here we are. I'm pulling him up, but look. You see, I'm trying to bait him here. Okay, so this is a dangerous move. There's times when you can be aggressive. There's times when you're not. Okay, so right here, he should have probably gone over the top. Given that, but then the second I see that idea, I, I try to drop there. I try to step forward. I try to time the tackle. We're guarding runs. We're guarding runs. We're guarding runs. And then boom, right here. We need to get there. He makes a play out wide. Offside trap comes up. And then boom. We're just constantly, constantly trying to grab that angle. You see how the entire time though, look at the, when we retain this ball, look at the structure of this defense, completely structured. He gets in the box, but it's very low consistent, low consistent uh, attack strategy. And all we do is just, we just completely destroy him on, a, on straight down the pitch. Guys, that's a very simple video I have for you today. Uh, there's a lot more to this. I wasn't really able to cover everything. There may be some people out there that may be a little bit critical of what I'm saying. Um, there's a lit. There's some mechanics that I, I I may have I may have skipped over. I'll try to do more of these in the future. But I hope you guys like this video. And as always, I really appreciate you guys. And uh, we'll see you guys soon.